You know, in recent years, F1 has changed quite a bit. The cars are bigger and faster. The sponsorships are flooding into the sport more than ever. There's the influx of influences, the introduction of video game style graphics, and of course, dad jokes. Lost Fernando Alonso with suspected brake problems and Nikita Mazepin with suspected crashing out problems from this race. While well, there have been new shiny things being added to the sport, there's been one man who's been ever present, Martin Brundle. The former racing driver spent many years in F1 and later decades been the calm and friendly face of F1. With his well measured insights, his dry humour, and of course being unimpressed with bodyguards shaped like fridges. He's the mild mannered F1 journalist who elevates the courage whenever he's on, but it's his manic and frantic F1 grid walks that have made him a British icon. It's not only so minutes of informative, but if not bewildering coverage, which sees Martin Bundle trying to get a better closer look at these cars, speak to some drivers, no. or just try and speak to anyone he can just for a quick chat. Esteban, Esteban, Esteban. Esteban! He's not listening. Quick word as you're walking. Good, what can you learn from the track on the outlap? The grid walk is a formula that's so successful that it's been on off screens for more than 25 years. And it's been on the likes of the BBC, ITV and Sky F1 whenever they've had the TV rights to show F1. That shows alone the longevity and the success of this format. It's an amazing TV format, even if it can get a bit cringeworthy at times, but I'm here to tell you why it's a British institution and if Sky F1 ever to remove it, I'll riot. The son of a car salesman, Martin Brundle has always had a passion for cars and later motor racing. After winning a BMW championship and finishing second place to a little known Brazilian called Ethan Senna in Formula 3, Martin got his big break in Formula 1 in 1984. Over 10 seasons, Martin bounced from various teams including Tyrrell, Williams, Benetton, McLaren and later raced alongside Michael Schumacher and Mika Hakkinen. Now we're not going to sit here and just read through his Wikipedia page and just rattle off facts off that, but if you do want to learn more about his F1 career and learn how untalented Martin Brundle was on the track, I'd highly recommend watching DS's video on him or just watch the F1 compilation of his best moments in the sport. Although I was a bit disappointed that they didn't show the clip of Martin Brundle quietly telling Christian Horner to do one. Shame you're too old to have driven here, really. I am too old to have driven here, you but... Liked uh, you would have liked it. Yeah. Shame you wasn't fast enough to get to Formula One. <laughs> His experience of F1 gave him the insight and knowledge to be able to commentate on F1 and he formally started his broadcasting career in 1997 alongside the legendary commentator Murray Walker. It was also the year we saw the first ever Martin Brundle grid walk at the British Grand Prix. It was more technical and trying to show us a behind the scenes look at the grid and how the drivers may set up and if there was going to be last minute tweaks in the cars. It laid the foundations of the grid walk and uh, looking back on this first season, it's actually amazing to see the grid not filled with influencers and VIPs and just idiots. For example, here he tries to demonstrate the point of view that drivers on the grid would have, which out of context looks like he's carrying on a sit down protest. The grid walk's also been the scene of many dramatic moments in F1 history, like how Martin Brundle outlined how much a shambles the USA Grand Prix in 2005 has turned out to be in front of F1 boss and your friend's nan, Bernie Eccleston. More on him later. That's it. Yeah, but they didn't bring tyres that were intentionally not up to it. They've just obviously been caught out by something a bad batch or this new diamond cut service. We saw Bridgestone having tyres fail in Barcelona with the safety car situation. Surely we just have to have a, a sensible pill and say, OK, this is the situation we find ourselves in. Let's take a sensible solution and go motor racing. Tell me where we can buy the pills. I don't, we need to talk to Mrs. Ecclestone. Maybe this needs a woman's common sense here. <laughs> But over the years, and as F1 got more commercial and attracted celebrities, influencers and idiots who had too much money and attention, the grid walk became a balance act between trying to be an F1 preview, but also trying to find celebrity to have a mild conversation with. I want to have a word with this guy because he's complete and utter fruitcake. Yeah, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just, uh, uh, I'm just in a currently writing a musical about the life of Tommy Rasputin and the Mad Monk. And we just got, uh, they're allowing it, allowing it to go on Broadway. All right, I'll try and think of a question for that answer. Did you bring the dogs with you? No, they're all at home. Uh, excellent, thank you very much. I think we'll move on. And that's not a criticism, it's just showing how the grid walk has evolved and how it's in this format today. Although I do wish that in the same way there's a Brundle wall, there's also a banning annoying knobhead from the grid. You look a very interesting character. Social media sensation, let's say this. <laughs> and modest too. And uh, yeah, so uh, what do you do on social media? 
What, what is your name, sir? Gianluca Vacchi. Okay, well, I'm sorry I didn't know, but I'm really pleased to have met you. Went well. God, what an idiot. He's also got a form for just saying as it is for his dry humour. At the 2023 Brazilian Grand Prix, Marston casually just took the piss out of Bernie Eccleston just weeks after he was sentenced for fraud. Now, I would love to show you that clip of a Thunderbird's puppet being told off by Martin Brundle, but I can't because it never somehow made its way onto the internet, uh, nor a funny enough Sky F1's YouTube channel, so I guess Bernie Eccleston had his uh, lawyers handy. Now, I don't usually watch the preamble on Sky F1 coverage because I find it's a lot of filler and just sort of waiting around before the race to start, but I'd happily tune into the grid walk. The setup for the grid walk is quite simple. Martin is armed with a microphone ready to shove into people's faces, he has an earpiece in with a chuso on the other end, and he has a camera who's ready to follow him around the grid. Well, tries to on a busy grid. His journey starts usually at the front of the grid and we see him sort of fight his way through the crowds and get himself to the middle of the, middle of the grid where hopefully he'll speak to the driver or someone very important. Martin, with the aid of his producer, is on the hunt for celebrities to interview about F1 and whatever guff is going on in their career. As it is unscripted on live TV, it's the classic anything unexpected can happen. Kimmy, you missed the presentation by Pele. Yeah. Did he get over it? <laughs> yeah, I was having a <laughs> Obviously you'll have a nice light car on the grid then. And now this is where a lot of the humour occurs, where Martin spots a celebrity and he tries to pursue them. And while I like to think that Martin has a basic knowledge of some celebrities and other sports, he can always at least ask a basic question before moving on to F1 and just trying to see who they're trying to support today. Sir, thank you for coming to have a chat with us. How are you doing? Lewis Hamilton, baby. Okay, well there, there you go. That's all you need to say. Lewis Hamilton, baby. That, that, that'll cover it. He's also got some sensational wordplay and puns he likes to cram in whenever he can. Trey Cool, Green Day. Hey, all right. How are you? Good. Welcome to paradise. Yeah, uh, man, all right. This could be a boulevard of broken dreams, but you look like you're, you're having the time of your life. All right. The best moment is when he tries to meet with some celebrities and he has to have a sort of a firm but polite approach where he just has to suddenly just stand there waiting for the person to be ready for him to be interviewed. Let's have a quick chat with, uh, if not we're going to chat with Rory McIlroy and come back, but... Uh... Go on Martin, tell him to fuck off back to space. In fact, you can play a fun little game where you can see a celebrity and you, and you bet whether or not Martin Brundle's going to spot them or not. But the problem with F1's obsession with giving a load of celebrities a VIP pass and throwing them onto the grid and the vain attempt to make the sport look cool and popular is a yet tits like Machine Gun Kelly who wander around the grid looking like a gormous idiot. To our grid. I have no idea what you said, but thank you. I said welcome to the grid. Ah, thank you, thank you. Honour to be here. Tell us about uh, your career at the moment. That's a, that's a puppy. What, what, what are you saying? One of Embarrassment to the human race he is. There's also painful moments where he has to interview egotistical individuals like DJ Khaled. We in Miami, this is my home, the best city in the world, and the whole world is here for this beautiful event. F1, family, fun, good energy, superstars, icons. They didn't want us here at F1, but what? God did. God did. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I'm not going to add any words to that. Beautifully summed up, sir. Promo, another one. <laughs> yeah, another tip. You also get moments like Martin Brundle getting palmed off by Megatis Stallion's security at the 2021 USA Grand Prix. You're a freestyle rapper. Have you got any rap for us today on Formula One? <laughs> I have no rap today. I'm sorry. Uh, who are you support? Who are you supporting in the race? Uh, I can do that because I did. Yeah. Okay. She seemed very happy to talk, didn't she? That's very nice of her, and I appreciate that. Well, you can argue that Megan wasn't really that arse about being interviewed by Martin Brundle. The celebrities on the grid have an understanding that they're supposed to enjoy the grid, but also do the odd hit to here or there. As a result of this incident, F1 brought in a clause that celebrities can't bring their personal army of bodyguards in with them onto the grid, and if that doesn't show you the gravitas and respect that Martin Brundle has in the sport, then, well, you're a bit dense. It also leans into how Martin is aware that some celebrities are not bothered by F1 and are more interested in a free day out with their sponsors. You can tell in some of the interviews that he quietly enjoys putting down celebrities as well. How many Grand Prix have you been to? Um, let's see. 
one. But outside all that nonsense, the charm of grid walk is Martin's genuine reactions to meeting former drivers and F1 drivers who warmly greet each other and share a joke for each other. It gives you sort of a feel as if you're tagging along with Martin on the way to the bar and he gives you a measure of how beloved he is and respected he is on the grid. Of course, and music star. I thought you were, you were the legend. <laughs> uh, hey, so my my microphone you. got involved in the man hug, but I'm hopeless at man hugs <laughs> anyway. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. wonderful to meet you. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Thanks to decades of broadcasting, not a single second is wasted by Martin on the grid walk, as he weaves through the crowds as he did as a driver back in his heyday. He's full of knowledge, he has a natural charm when he, when he interviews people, and he's always on the lookout for something to discuss, whether it's just the, the working on the cars, the state of the cars, any sort of backstory for any of the drivers on the grid, or just describing what you see, the, the basics of motor and journalism that I think that a lot of people have come to appreciate in, in Rears and why he's so respected in this field. Getting a behind the scenes look at the cars that have been worked on by crews, Martin speaking to the drivers as they prepare for a, a grueling race, it really, as a viewer, immerses yourself in the pre-race experience and really actually gets you set up for the race itself. I have to see this view through the valley. At the top of the hill over there, you've got the crowd at Radion. Top up there is Rivage and Les Combes. That's the middle sector of the lap, all the way through the valley and to this relatively short pit straight. And here is a man I think is going to have an awful lot of fun today. It's no wonder this basic format is sort of translated to other shows that Sky F1 offers, like Ted's Notebook, which is more casual and just features Ted Kravitz wandering back of some paddocks, while his 10-year-old cameraman just wanders off and films something more interesting. For this video, I watched hours of the grid walks and I found it to be a refreshing reminder of how magic and simple the format is and how Martin is the glue that sort of holds it all together. Yes, it can be a bit of a cringe fest with Martin trying to speak to Pep Guardiola, who clearly doesn't want to be interviewed, but it's a solid staple of F1 coverage and it offers something new to the pre race experience. And personally speaking, I also appreciate it as watching it as a journalist, because you see news gathering in action and actual filling the screen time with actual information and just not fluff. It's all killer, no filler, and it's brilliant. The only similar thing I could think of when watching these sort of videos is the Facebook Lives I've filmed over the years with my day job. I've filmed countless Facebook Lives from serious incidents or events where I've basically had to describe what I see, what I know. The act of filming and sharing what you see without minimum of silence is surprisingly quite difficult. The ums and ahs creep in, uh, repeating what you've already said and just walking around the same spot and just not offering anything new. But Martin is a calm and safe pair of hands who just thrives being on the grid and just gets immersed in the F1 experience. It might be decades on for his last race, but it's very clear from every grid walk, every commentary, every interview that he still gets the same thrill as he used to when he was actually racing. Martin Brunner was one of the main pillars supporting the Sky F1 coverage and even the channel knows it itself, that's why they're keen to ensure they get as much as they can from it as possible. And while Martin Brundle has a clear love-hate relationship with the grid walk formats, long may it continue because it's a clear winner for not only just him but the Sky F1 coverage and us viewers at home. It'll be a damn shame when the grid walk goes but I shudder to think what it gets replaced with. If you made it this far, thank you very much for watching this video. If you did like the video, please give me a thumbs up. If you've got any thoughts or funny Martin Brundle moments you want to share in the comments below, do it right now. And of course, subscribe to my YouTube channel. But if you just want to hang around and see what else I do, here's something about me being a journalist and what it's like. And that's also something else that you might be interested in. Or might be. Who knows?